and welcome to another lesson about language development. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to talk about some of the phonetic variables that uh, children are listening to as they're trying to learn how to understand their first language. So by phonetic variables, what I mean is um, features of the sound uh, that a child can hear and we can analyze um, uh, to figure out you know, how, whether what you're hearing is a B or a D or whether what you're hearing is an A ah or an A, ah, things like that, right? So these are the types of sort of um, uh, things that we're going to talk about in this, in this lesson. So the first thing we're going to talk about is fairly simple, and this is distinguishing between different types of plosives. Now, plosives are a type of consonant um, in which your airway temporary, temporarily closes completely and then releases the air. So, the, so good examples of these are like T and D, where you have to go ta, right? You, you close the air, pressure builds up behind your tongue, and then you release the air. Um, we'll go through these more in depth when we start uh, talking about production. Um, but for right now, these are a type of sounds where the, where the sound is cut off temporarily and then reintroduced. Um, and one of the things uh, that, um, that a child will have to figure out is how long you cut off that sound when you're producing a, um, a plosive in, 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 that, in the language that the child's learning, right? So the first type of um, visualization that we're going to use um, is called a waveform. Um, now a waveform is, is basically just a way that a computer can make you, let you visualize um, how much sound is being produced at a given time, how loud is the sound, right? So when you hear, when you're, when you're looking at the waveform of speech and you see a big pause like this, somebody has either stopped speaking just decided to not talk anymore, or else you've got a closure, right? So a closure um, is what we call this period um, between when the sound is cut off by a plosive and when it's released again. So this is the closure. And this here, when the sound starts again, is called a release. So when you make the sound ta, you have a temporary closure that's really quite short, ta, right? And then the t, t sound, that sort of puffy sound, is where you get the release. So the closure and the release. And the duration of the closure um, is something that can vary um, between consonants of different types and consonants in different languages. So a child who's learning to, to, to use plosives and to understand plosives thinks about how long was that closure for? So there are some languages in which the length of a closure um, will change the sound that you're producing. So in English, whether I say ta or ta, ta, the, the you know, if I, here, it's easier to say if I, here if I say a ta versus a ta, it's still a t, right? So the length of the closure doesn't change the sound that you're producing, but there are languages in which a ta means something different from a ta, right? And so a child has to learn, in my language, are those two sounds different or does the closure just signify, you know, how emphatic you're being or something like that. So that's the first um, variable to do with plosives that a child is paying attention to, which is how long is this time during which you keep your mouth closed when you're making the plosive. Um, the second time variable is called the voice onset time. Now the voice onset time um, has to do with after you've released the air, how much time is there between the release and when you start making the vowel sound. So in, in this waveform, we've got a closure that lasts from here to here, right? So here's a closure. And then we have a release. Right? There's your release. That's the end of the closure. Um, but in between the release and this, um, this loudness here is when you've released your vowel. So that's when, you're, when your voice box is vibrating again. Um, it's much louder. Um, in terms of the amplitude, right? So this would be a sound like a, a ta, t, a, t, a, right? So you release it before you kick in your voice box, right? Before you start making a vowel, there's a release. Um, and, and plosives like this are called aspirated. And you can tell if, you're, if your plosive is aspirated by putting your hand in front of your mouth and then going pa, pa, a pa, 
right? And if you can feel a puff of air that comes out like that, then it's going to be an aspirated plosive, right? Um, and the time in between the release and the onset of voicing, right? So the onset of the vowel is this time here is your voice onset time or VOT is how it's abbreviated, right? So this, if you have release is on the left and voicing is on the right, you have a positive voice onset time and you have an aspirated plosive. Um, if we go back up and look at this plosive up here that we gave as the example um, for, to, to illustrate the closure and the release, this has a, a voice onset time of zero, right? So the moment that you release it, you are um, uh, producing voicing. And this is usually what um, voiced consonant, voiced plosives in English are like. So the ones that are D's and G's um, and B's tend to have a voice onset time around zero. Ba, da, ga, right? They tend to be about zero voice onset time. Whereas um, in English, um, P, T, and K um, tend to be aspirated. So they have a positive voice onset time, right? So when you say pa, ta, and ka, you can feel that puff of air. But when you say ba, da, and ga, you can't hear that. You can't feel that puff of air because it, it just all goes at once. All right. And the last, um, the last category that we have is something that's not present in English, but is present in some languages. Um, and these are called pre-voiced plosives. So these are plosives where the onset of voicing actually happens before you open your mouth to release the sound, right? So here we have the closure. That's our closure there. And we have our release. And on the waveform, you actually get this weird sort of single squiggly line. And what that says is that the voicing has actually started here. It means you've turned on your voice box before the air can get out of your mouth. So what this sounds like is a ba, a ba, a ba. There's this sort of build up behind, you know, you makes you want to want to puff up your cheeks, sort of, a da, a da, a ba, right? So, so, so this would sound like a ba, right? Um, now notice that since we have the release on the right and the voicing on the left, we're going in this direction, which makes this a negative voice onset time. So this is a negative VOT. Um, now there are languages that have, um, where they have a D, a G, and a B, and they have a P, a T, and a K, and they also have a pre-voiced B, D, um, and G, which sound like ba, ga, and da, right? So one of the things that a child is doing is they're figuring out, so here's the VOT here. So they're figuring out not only how long do I leave my mouth closed, right, which is the same on all three of these, right, but they're also figuring out when do I turn on my voice box after or before I open my mouth on these, on these types of sounds? So those are some of the um, phonetic variables for plosives.